What's up everybody, welcome back. My name is Josh and today we're talking about why cash flow is so much more important than net worth. Let's go. So obviously before I get started, I have to obviously share the disclaimer that I'm not a financial advisor. I don't have any kind of financial background and this is just for entertainment purposes. This is what I've been doing with my money. These are my thoughts on my investments, etc., etc. The rest of the disclaimer is in the description below. Now with that out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and start this off with how I arrived at why cash flow is so much more important than net worth for me, so a little bit of a background there, especially if you're chasing after financial independence. Then I'm gonna share what net worth and cash flow actually are in terms of definition and how I look at them. And then the reasons why I think cash flow is so much more important than net worth. At the very end, I'll also share how I arrived at that cash flow number for myself. So story time. I graduated out of college and I didn't really have much of a financial backing, understanding, education. I just knew about working a nine to five and putting money into a 401k and that was about it. So I had to go out and learn a lot of that stuff. So with that came the idea that you had to chase this number, get to a millionaire by 30, right? Just put a, put a number out there, that's your net worth. And the more research I did, the more understanding I got on building out an investment portfolio, building passive income, the faster I realized that that net worth wasn't as important as the cash flow coming in. And I quickly realized that because cash flow is what actually pays the expenses, which we'll talk about in, this, in a second. And net worth is really just this number that fluctuates that's tied to me or you or whoever we're tying this number to. So definition of net worth for me and by what a lot of people go by is essentially assets minus liabilities. And to break down the assets, I would really call it anything that has value. At the end of the day, some people say that a home that has a loan on it is an asset. In a sense, I would agree with that. There's value in that home. You have equity in that home, most likely. And then there's a loan. Now, on the investor side, I would say it's not necessarily an asset because it's not making you any money because you're just living in it and not renting it out. Hence, no cash flow. But that's not the definition here. Again, assets minus liabilities, liabilities being your debt, things that you owe or pay money to. Give you an example here. So the net worth of an individual that has one property and makes a little W-2 income. So the one property is worth $600,000. They have a $400,000 loan, we're not counting in the cash flow, which means 600 minus 400 equals 200K. So their net worth essentially, assets minus liabilities, is 200K. The other piece is you can start adding in other things on the asset side. So you can really technically add your car if it's paid off, right? Your car has a value to it. And while it does depreciate like crazy, you still have some kind of value and you can sell and earn cash money for selling your car if you have no loan on it, right? So that's technically an asset in a sense. Now, while we're talking about the difference between net worth and cash flow and why I feel cash flow is so much more important, I do have to at least point this out about how the average net worth for Americans in certain age groups is pretty skewed, actually. The average net worth right now for ages 35 and under in America is $76,000 to $76,200. It's so skewed by the people that are the hyper wealthy, right? The 1%, the 2%. The median net worth is actually $11,000 and the average salary is $56,400 in a year. So you can, you can see your net worth isn't necessarily correlated to your income there and you can read through the rest of this article, but it, it is pretty wild to see what the actual median net worth is once you remove some of those skewing variables. Now onto the cash flow definition. It's similar to net worth in the fact that it's one thing subtracted from another thing, and that's about it. Cash flow is essentially your income, W-2 or anything else, minus expenses, right? And that's it, simple as that. So an example there, we're just gonna use W-2 here, we're not gonna use passive income as well, but your W-2 income, let's say you make $3,000 in a month, you have $1,500, a month in expenses, $3,000 minus $1,500 equals $1,500 in cash flow. That can be used on other discretionary things, investing, that kind of thing. Where that really gets a lot of fun is if you use that $1,500 to actually create additional income, so you earn a property and now you're, you've got, let's say, 
a, a duplex where you're living and living rent free. So your expenses drop and then you're also adding in more actual income. So now you've gone up to, let's say, $4,000 in income and now your expenses have actually dropped down to, let's say, $1,000. So now you're making double your cash flow. You can see how that kind of waterfalls. And while your net net worth definitely adjusted in that fact because you got a property, so your net worth number has gone up, guess what's actually liquid and, and you can actually spend that $3,000 to continue to building that, that quote unquote net worth, but really you're building your income stream. So here are the three reasons why I actually feel that cash flow is so much more important than net worth. Number one, I literally just touched on it and it's the fact that cash flow income pays your expenses. At the end of the day, you can be a very high net worth individual, yet you have zero cash to pay your bills. Let's say you get your single family home of $400,000 or $500,000 or $300,000, it doesn't really matter. You have a little bit of equity in there, 20, 25, 30%, maybe you put 10% in. Your net worth is that equity piece, right? That's it. So your net worth might actually be more than your income at the end of the day, your cash flow, but you're actually living paycheck to paycheck because you're, you're paying a mortgage. The property itself isn't actually paying you. You're just paying a mortgage and that's about it. And you have your W2 income. So you're kind of locked in golden cuffs to that W2 and that's the only income stream. High net worth, but not necessarily making any kind of cash flow. Again, cash flow pays your expenses. So if you're hunting down your financial freedom, if you want your income streams to replace your W-2, you need to one, understand what your expenses are. And the reason for that is because you need to know how much income you need to pay those expenses and then live, right? And you can only calculate that by understanding your cash flow and your expenses. Understanding net worth isn't really gonna help you there. So reason number one is because cash flow income pays your expenses. Reason number two is directly correlated to reason number one and the fact that by focusing on cash flow, so the income that's coming in, my net worth will actually go up. That's not necessarily the case with focusing on your net worth number. The reason there and the example there is what I just said in reason number one and by purchasing a property, you might have some equity in the property but it's actually not making you any more money and you're still grinding day and night to pay bills. By focusing on cash flow, you're actually creating additional income streams. So take that same example and let's say you got a duplex and there's a little bit of equity there, your net worth has gone up, but now what you've done is you're paying your mortgage down, right, by living in one unit and paying down your expenses and then having somebody rent out the other side and increasing your income then you use that discretionary income, roll it around and either put it into the stock market, put it into another property, and now you've also increased your net worth even further and also increased your income and decreased your expenses. It continues to snowball. If you focus on cash flow, income versus expenses, instead of just a net worth number. The very last reason, number three, is the fact that cash flow really doesn't fluctuate too much with let's say things like a recession. Net worth regularly fluctuates. If you own the stock market, last year with COVID, I think if you were watching the stock market, it was very stressful for you. Your retirement accounts tanked, everything dropped, and it worked its way back up. But if you were just focusing on your net worth number and flipping out about that, then you're probably gonna have some issues last year. Now, at the same time, if you had dividend paying stocks, the majority of dividend aristocrats, dividend kings, people that were paying dividends over 25 and 50 years, continue to pay their dividends. And most of them were not cut or decreased. So that means your cash flow continued. The point there is in the worst economic times, cash flow normally doesn't fluctuate too much. There's always fringe cases. There's always exceptions to the rule like this last year, which has really been an exception for everybody because no one really foresaw any of what happened last year and continued into this year. But for the most part, cash flow does not fluctuate and net worth is that number that goes ups and down, sees the peaks and troughs and will stress you out if you only focus on that. So the last piece here is just how I approached getting to that cash flow point. When I first graduated and probably up until about 24, 25, when I really started to invest in real estate, I was very focused on net worth. And I'm not saying I'm not focused on net worth anymore because 
like I said, if you focus on cash flow, your net worth will continue to rise and increase. I've always got that number in mind and what I want to get to, but it's because of the cash flow that is being created for me and the income that's coming through minus my expenses. So what I did to get to that point and really focus on cash flow is I did have to budget first and I still regularly budget. And by budgeting, I mean really track my budget. I had to know what I was spending. And I broke it out into a couple of different tiers. I broke it out into literally the, the living expenses. What do I need to buy groceries, eat food, keep the power on? And that was my number. I needed that, that's, that's what I needed to live on. So there was that first tier of, of cash flow, right? Find income sources that could replace that. Then the next tier up is just living, right? Let's say you wanna go flying or you wanna go travel or anything on top of what your general living expenses are. And then on top of that, you could go to the next level once you start to really snowball your investment opportunities and realize what you wanna to get to of just living lavishly and maybe spending your time where you don't have to work at all and you can just spend it volunteering or whatever you wanna do, it doesn't really matter. So I looked at it by figuring out what my basic expenses were because cash flow is income minus expenses and just working up from there. That was the easiest way for me to do it. You can use an Excel sheet, you can track all that stuff. That's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for stopping by, and if you liked the video, go ahead and press like. If you wanna leave any kind of comments or questions, leave one in the comment section below. And if somebody else is also trying to figure out what's going on with cash flow versus net worth, go ahead and send the video over to them. I think it's a pretty simple, a breakdown of cash flow versus net worth and it was something I would have really appreciated when I was back in college and so focused on this net worth number. Hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. I'll catch you later. See ya.